For generations, the resilience of Londoners has been tested and they've always come through, however tough the tragedy. Josie has been to Halston in northwest London to meet one young man who embodies a spirit of hope for the future. What's the area like to live in? Um, yeah, you know, Halston's a very multicultural area. Um, it has had a negative um, reputation in the past, you know, but I think every negative area has something good to offer. Absolutely. So, yeah. What were you like then as a child growing up around here and a young man? When I was a teenager, I used to go clubbing, raving, and you started drinking alcohol and like at the same time I would still be um, going to church mm -hmm. so I kind of felt like I had one foot in the church and one foot in the rave sort of thing. Yeah. It all kind of came to a uh, standpoint for me when um, I had my first child, I was expecting my first child so that's when I just thought just forget all this raving and nightclub and getting drunk, coming home late let me just try and be responsible and take my Christianity more seriously. After getting his life back on track, David spent five years studying at college. And today, he is the Reverend David and taking his first ever communion service as the UK's youngest black Church of England priest. And in the dream, I was so happy in the dream. Like how I feel right now, amen? David brings to his church sermons the infectious humour he's always had. It's a moment of joy for his friends and family. I had some fresh night trainers and I was looking all swagalicious. <laughs> it brings tears to the eyes, joy to the heart. It's not just him being a priest. It's him being given a job by God. It's been a journey. As David's mom, I, I watched him grow. Of course, he made his mistakes. Um, however, he did not go too far before God pulled him back. He is so inspiring. I have fallen in love with Jesus. And it would be nice to see him become a bishop one day. I think that would be really cool because our grandfather was an archdeacon. So it would be nice to see um, David kind of surpass that. Growing up in Stonebridge, it wasn't easy. You know, I remember getting into a fight um, just across the road and um, a young man pulled out a knife and tried to stab me. You know, so um, when I look back at that, you know, I just think to myself, I could have been in, in the papers for, for a different reason other than being a priest. So, you know, I'm just um, thankful to God that he um, gave me an opportunity to inspire other young black men to put the knives down, put the guns down, and just to do something positive so that we can create a better future for everybody else. We know the world is not a perfect place and it needs a lot of healing. And what would you pray be in the time that we're in now? I just pray that God would just protect London and just give the world a peace that passes all understanding you know when human beings have run out of answers and explanations as to why there's so much evil you just have to look to that higher good and that higher power Jesus Christ our Lord Amen Not all of us are able to offer practical help in times of tragedy, but just as this wall near Grenfell Tower shows us, each of us can have a voice through prayer. For the youth of our nation, bring light. For the people who serve our nation, bring love. For those who hurt in our nation, bring healing. For your love never fails, and through the darkness, your light always shines. Amen. Next week, Claire McCollum is on the Wirral, visiting the idyllic village of Port Sunlight, built by the Christian entrepreneur William Lever for his factory workers. And 13-year-old Bo Dermot sings Tears in Heaven. And now we return to Southwark Cathedral for our final hymn.